Hi, welcome to the garden. Today I'm pruning my limelight hydrangeas and I thought I'd show you how I'm gonna get that done. Limelight hydrangeas grow on new wood, which here in Michigan is great because a lot of times when hydrangeas grow on old wood, if you get a really cold spring, it can damage the flowers. So in my garden, I've got two kinds of hydrangeas. I have Annabelle hydrangeas, and in the springtime, I cut those right to the ground. It's not very complicated. I've got three large limelight hydrangeas, and today we're going to prune them. All right, so the whole purpose of pruning your hydrangeas is you wanna think about leaving a framework of branches that are gonna support the upcoming season's growth. So you're gonna focus on getting rid of any dead and dying branches, of course, and you're gonna remove any smaller branches, like these small branches aren't gonna be capable of holding up stems. So I'm gonna be getting rid of all of these really small branches and cutting those right back. I'm gonna reduce the height of the plant by about a third. Um, again, I'm gonna look at the shape. I'm going to focus on reducing the size and I'm going to cut to to a new basically where you've got a strong pair of buds and I'm going to show you what that means. So the great thing about limelight hydrangeas is they grow on new wood so we don't have to worry about cutting any flower buds off. What we want to do is we want to create a strong framework for the blooms that are going to bloom this season. The reason that we prune is really to keep the shape uh, looking nice during the growing season, also to encouraging better flowering. Another reason why we prune is we want to provide good air circulation. So we're gonna look to get rid of any crossing branches or branches that are real small, that are crowding in the center. We're gonna get rid of those. We're gonna reduce the height by about a third and again, you know, if you wanted to, you could just remove the spent flowers. Um, most of my flowers have been removed because I use those flowers to make wreaths uh, for decorating in the wintertime. Um, but they also make great uh, decorations out in the garden to use for winter interest. So you don't need a lot of equipment to do your pruning. If you have really large branches that you need to remove, a handsaw is a very good tool to have. Um, I'm not going to need this today because the branches I'm removing I can remove with a lopper or with my hand pruners, but this is a great tool to have for pruning. The next tool that we need is a bypass lopper. So by bypass, what I mean is a curved blade. And the benefit to the curved blade as opposed to a flat blade is this is not going to crush the branches, so it's not going to damage the branches. I have an example here of a flat pruner, and I'm just going to put a small little branch in there and kind of show you what I mean when I say that it kind of crushes the branch when you try to cut it. So like, I'm not going to cut through this branch, but I want to just show you how you can see like right here, it's making that branch flat. Now, if I do the same thing with a bypass lopper, so you can see here, even though I'm pulling and pushing hard, it's really going to cut the branch. It's not going to crush the branch. And the last thing is a bypass hand pruner. So let's get started. Okay, so for me, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all these really small branches or any dead branches because these small branches are not going to hold up any stems so you can see how small these branches are so we're just going to go ahead and cut all of these off and do that throughout the whole plant here I'm also going to be looking to remove for the time being I'm just going to take the tops of these flowers off but uh, like I said I'm going to be removing a third of the height of this plant so I'll be doing more than just taking the flower tips off but that's just how I'm going to start and it gives me a chance to see like this is such a small branch I'm going to cut that right back to the main branch because that branch is too small and then here I've got some branches that are going to be crisscrossing. So I'm going to cut that back 
to the main stem. Same with this here. And I'm gonna look to just have some good air circulation. Again, just removing some of these um, smaller branches and removing any stubs. The thing about the stubs is they will die back and like I've got two stubs right here and I need to remove those. You wanna cut these stubs back because these are just places where you can get disease entering your plant. And I'm going to be cutting back to a strong pair of buds and removing about, oh, I'd say about a third of the height I'm going to be removing from the limelight hydrangea. I actually want this plant to be fairly large this season. So if I didn't, I would cut it back even more. Um, this one I'm just going to totally remove. And the same with this one. Again, cutting back to a strong pair of buds. And again, I'm gonna keep the diagram down in the description so you can see what a proper cut looks like. And that was a diagram that I found on the website for the University of Minnesota. Very helpful, very helpful. I thought you'd enjoy. I thought that that would be a helpful diagram to include. So again, I am just cutting back to a strong pair of buds and reducing the size of this plant by about a third. And I just stand back and kind of look at it just to see if there's anything else I want to remove. This one is close to being in contact, but I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna just take that one right off here. And that's a good start. So that's all there is to it. It's all done for the season. Now it'll be ready for blooms. That's all there is to pruning the limelight hydrangea. It's pretty easy. And you know what? The good thing is limelight hydrangeas grow on new wood. If you totally screw it up, it's going to be fine because it'll grow back. You know, hit me up in the comments and let me know if you've run into any problems when you've pruned your limelight hydrangeas. For the most part, I think limelight hydrangeas, which is a panicle hydrangea and also Annabelle hydrangeas, um, arborescence hydrangeas are really pretty easy upkeep because like in the case of the Annabelle hydrangea, for mine, I just cut them right back to the ground. And you can see for the limelight hydrangeas, I basically remove all the small branches, remove all the dead branches, remove all the crossing branches, and reduce the height by about a third. All right, so I got one limelight hydrangea pruned up and I've got two more to do tonight. Thanks for joining me. Pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. But again, you know what? If you've got great tips and tricks uh, for pruning your limelight hydrangeas, hit me up in the comments below. That's the awesome thing about the gardening community. People are always so willing to share their knowledge and advice. And we'd love to hear from you. So share in the comments below if you've got any tips and tricks on pruning limelight hydrangeas for us. That's all for this video. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next one.